Hello friends, in today's session we will be talking about antenatal examination. For many students it becomes very important to pass in your viva in the examination because examination plays a vital role in scoring marks. So when you do antenatal examination, always remember prior to examination you have to take verbal consent from the patient. You have to ask your patient to evacuate her bladder properly because otherwise fundal height will not be taken in a proper manner. And then in the presence of an attendant and in a bright lit room, you do the examination. At the very onset, you expose the patient's abdomen from the Xiphi sternum to the pubic symphysis. And then first we go for inspection. In inspection, as you can see, we will first look for the uterine ovoid. The uterine ovoid is longitudinal or not. In a cephalic position or in if it is a longitudinal line, then the uterine ovoid is longitudinal. Then you look for whether uh, the linea nigra is central or not. Central linea nigra is a normal finding, but if it is deviated to one side or the other, then it says that there is an adnexal pathology. There can be a fibroid associated with pregnancy or there can be transverse lie or there can be ovarian masses. Then you look for stria gravidarum, whether stria gravidarum are present or not. <coughs> then in inspection, you look for whether any previous scar is present or not. Previous cesarean scar is transverse or vertical. Then you look for any engorged veins or vessels these all are your inspection findings. On superficial palpation, you check for the local temperature or any tenderness. Hepatomegaly and splenomegaly will not be appreciated in pregnancy. Then on deep palpation, that is obstetric examination, what we do is first we look for the fundal height. For the fundal height, we will ask our patient to flex her legs because flexing of the legs will relax the abdominal muscles. Then with the ulnar border of your left hand, you start palpating from Xiphi sternum and at the first resistance which you feel, you stop and you mark that point. Now this is the fundal height. If the uterine height is at the umbilicus, then it is around 22 weeks at the center of the umbilicus. Lower border of umbilicus is 20 weeks and 24 weeks is the upper border of the umbilicus. At Xiphi sternum, it is 36 weeks and midway you then divide the points so for easy remembrance i can also say that one finger corresponds to one week so if this is 24 week i'll put two fingers this is 26 weeks this is 28 weeks this is 30 weeks 32 weeks 34 and then 36 at z sternum so my fundal height is around 26 28 30 32 weeks so it is around 32 weeks with the flanks full then we check for symphysiofundal height. For symphysiofundal height, we have already marked the fundal point, uh, fundal uh, height at this point. We will now ask the patient to relax her legs. This will be measured in centimeters. So this is the centimeter marking. But what I will do is, I will take the measurement by keeping the inches point above, inverting the tape then I will check the measurement in centimeters and I find that it is around 32 centimeters. So from 24 to 36 weeks, the fundal height will correspond to the symphysio fundal height in centimeters. Also, I will take the abdominal girth at the level of the umbilicus. So it is taken in inches. So when I take the umbilical girth, then my tape will be such that the centimeter part is above and then I will measure it by cross tape method. I will cross the tape, I will mark the point and then I will measure it in inches. So I find that it is around 29.5 inches. So it will also correspond to the abdominal girth at inches. Next we go for the Leupold maneuvers. So the first Leupold maneuver for that we will again flex the legs of the patient. For the first three Leupold maneuvers I will face the patient's head and for the fourth Leupold's maneuver I will face the patient's feet. So first Leupold's maneuver is the fundal grip. So I will feel for the fundal uh, fundus of the uterus 
and there is a broad soft irregular part which is suggestive of breach so that is the buttocks but in case of a breach presentation when the head is above at that time there will be round globular and palatable structure which will be felt at the level of the fundus in the second loopholes maneuver or the lateral grip we will stabilize the uterus from one side and with the other hand we will try to palpate it so in the right side i am feeling a smooth curved round structure which is suggestive of back on the other side when we stabilize and push we find knobby structure felt on the other side which is suggestive of fetal limbs in the third loopholes maneuver which is also called the second pelvic grip mind you not the first but the second pelvic grip and the third loopholes maneuver we use one hand that is the right hand which is also called the pollex grip we will try to feel for the fetal head and try to feel whether it is palatable or not if the head has been engaged then it will not be palatable but if the head is freely mobile and palatable then it means the head has not been engaged now the fourth loopholes maneuver or the first pelvic grip for that we face the patient's legs and with two hands we will try to feel for the fetal head if our hands are convergent like in this case it is convergent it means that the fetal head is not engaged into the pelvis but if the uh, both hands are divergent or not converging then it means that the fetal head has engaged so these are the four loophole maneuvers apart from that in examination you have to estimate the fetal weight you have to tell about the liker and the if the head has been engaged then uh, whether it is flexed or deflexed for estimated fetal weight we can use either the palm method or we can use johnson's formula for palm method you uh, take the point uh, in the pubic symphysis then with 1 2 3 the palms have to be placed one above the other and each palm measure will uh, approximately measure 500 grams so when you add it you see three palms are coming and when the flanks are full you add 500 grams more so it is around 1500 plus 500 around 2 kg 2 to 2.2 kg will be the estimated fetal weight for johnson's formula we uh, take the fundal height in centimeters and then subtract 12 11 or 13 depending upon the head has been engaged or not suppose the fundal height was 32 cm and my if my head is at zero station then i will subtract 12 if my head has been deeply engaged into the pelvis i will subtract 11 and if my head has not been engaged and freely palatable in the abdomen then i will subtract 13 so like as as an example if my uh, fundal height symphysio fundal height was 32 cm and i uh, my head is at zero station then i will subtract 12 to so 32 minus 12 will be 20 so to this value i will multiply 155 So 20 into 155 will be roughly around 3,100. So the estimated fetal weight will be 3,100 grams or 3.1 kg. Now for Liker estimation, it is the clinical expertise of the examiner we, uh, that we can assess it. If you feel the fetal parts more superficial, then you say that Liker seems to be reduced. If you are not able to Uh, find the fetal parts then you say that liker seems to be increased that is polyhydration for auscultation what we do is first uh, as i had already said the in the right hand side i had felt the fetal back so in the the side where the back is in the spino umbilical line we will uh, take a point which is 2/3 and 1/3 the junction of 2/3 in the medial and 1/3 in the lateral and at that point we will feel for the fetal heart with the bell of the stethoscope we try to auscultate the fetal heart normal fetal heart is between 110 to 160 beats per minute so uh, this is the obstetric examination which we routinely do in all patients for more updated videos remain subscribed to our channel medimantra